Hello and welcome to City Slickers, the magazine show dedicated to the fortunes of Lincoln City. We're here at the Shed Pub overlooking the Brayford and over the next few minutes myself and Imps writer Lee Curtis will be looking back on the last seven days at Sinsall Bank. We'll be previewing the crucial games against Shrewsbury and Macclesfield and we'll be hearing from Imps boss Peter Jackson, Jamie Forrester and Lee Beavers. OK Lee, uh, two games this week, the Imps ground out a victory over Dagenham but then it was a bit of a horror show against Mansfield, more slack defending, defending cost the Imps and which Peter Jackson described as madness and you can't really disagree with him can you? No, it was a poor performance in the second half especially, you know the first half they played quite well and the second half the defending was absolutely appalling you know and same old sloppy errors from the same players um, and you just wonder how long it can continue really because Peter Jackson is obviously putting his faith into Lee Beavers and Nat Brown I, but I don't think he's getting the, the faith paid back into him for choosing them each week. So is it time for changes back there? Well perhaps it'd have to be, um, I, I think I'll probably give him another couple of games but um, you know, I mean, I mean, everyone's panicking at the minute. But if you actually have a look at, at the statistics, the, the Lincoln didn't keep a clean sheet from um, since August, did they? And they got the first one against uh, Rochdale in January. So they've actually kept two this month out of four or five games. So I don't think there's a need to panic too much. But certainly, you know, the errors need to stop, and otherwise, it's just going to plummet down the table. But it doesn't seem to matter which back four Peter Jackson plays or John Schofield plays. They're still conceding goals. Absolutely, I know, and they're, they're, it's. it's it's very hard because actually the play, for the first half against Mansfield, I thought Nat Brown had an excellent game, and then but he, he, his hard work is, is undone by very very stupid lapses of concentration, you know. And there's only so much, there's only so many times he's going to be allowed to get away with that before the manager decides to make changes. And obviously, his AD Mose is out on the bench. Perhaps you know, perhaps it may be that he comes back into the side. He's a bit more experienced than. You know, you look at the goals that were conceded, the long balls over the top, you know, and three or four times I got caught out by them. And, they, you know, that's when you rely on your defence to adjust and, and make sure you don't get caught out. And they didn't. And so, you know, the manager will look at that and I think he'll give them a couple more games and then I think we might, might see the return of Aidy Moses. OK, we'll be looking ahead to the Shrewsbury game in a moment. But first, let's hear from Imps boss, Peter Jackson. You know, I thought we looked comfortable first half, uh, very comfortable against them, yet second half with 20 minutes to go they got in two or three times, so the warning signs were there uh, that this could happen and it did, um, but it's always hard to take, particularly what, 10 seconds left of a game and you get beaten, you get turned over, so uh, a bit disappointing, but you know that's gone now, there's nothing we can do about it, let's be positive, look forward uh, to another big game on Saturday. Set the players afterwards a real roller coaster. It will be. We try on the end of the season. We'll have a lot of highs, we'll have some lows. And it's how we respond when we're on a low. Obviously we're on a low after the game. It's up to me to pick the players up, get them ready and prepare them well for the tough uh, trip to Shrewsbury. But Gary Peters has, 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 has got a side there that I hit and miss on the day as good as anything in this division. On his day, they're as bad as anything. So inconsistency, similar to ours, has, has cost them, and that's why they're not pushing for uh, promotion players. Yeah, I've been given one. You know, when when I came here, we were bottom, similar to Wrexham. I have signed. I've only signed three loan players. You know, Wrexham have signed. How many they signed? Twelve, nine, twelve. Where are they? OK, Lee, the transfer window's been and gone. Lee Ridley's extended his loan spot until the end of the season, but Adam Smith has returned to Chesterfield. Apart from that, not much going on, really. Yeah, not a surprise, really. I think we spoke about this last week, didn't we, when we were debating about who would come in and, and who would possibly leave. Uh, Phil Watts obviously gone on loan to Corby, and obviously Ryan Semples now has his contract paid up, so that uh, frees up a bit of money. Uh, there seems to be a bit of panic stations at the minute about the lack of signings, but people have got to remember the loan window's still open until March anyway. Uh, I don't think it would make any sense bringing anybody in on a permanent deal at the minute because I think you know you've got to start looking ahead towards next season you know and uh, and trying to build trying to get Lincoln back to being promotion contenders again so no need to panic I think uh, I think Peter will give it a couple more games and if he wants to bring anybody in he'll bring somebody in online well that's another crucial game for the Inch tomorrow at Shrewsbury they were looking for revenge from the first game of the season and uh, that game really set the tone didn't it well, I, well, that was it. Everything was after the disappointing end to the season in May. You know, you really wanted a good start and a very, very poor performance that day. I mean, I think that that game typified what the whole season has been about. Really, very sloppy defensive errors. You know, not not doing much going forward and um, very disappointing. But obviously, since then, and Shrewsbury have slid down the table somewhat. The mid-table, and you, you just hope that. 
seeing as they've not really got nothing to play for, that they might just be a little bit slack tomorrow and Lincoln can go there and get a, uh, get a much needed win. Yeah, now Shrews aren't the best of form either. Um, I don't think we're predicting a classic, are we? No, I don't think the Lincoln Treasure games are very rarely classics, are they? So, um, I, I mean, I went to the game last season at, at, at the Old Meadow, which was um, finished 1 1, I think. 1 0, didn't it? Lee Frecklington scored. So, um, obviously, he's not going to be playing this weekend. So, the, the, what they're going to need to do is going to need to battle because Gary Peters' side is always up for, up for a fight. He's a, bit of a, he's a John Beck disciple, likes to play the ball long. So Lincoln have got to stand up to some physical stuff tomorrow, and, but uh, hopefully if they can ride out a storm then uh, and pick up, a, like I say, a much needed three points. You mentioned Leith Eppington there. Um, it's very unlikely he's going to be involved on Saturday, but the Imps need him back ASAP, don't they? Yeah, I mean, it's, um, it underlines his importance to the team, really, doesn't it? I mean, he's, what is he, 20, 21 years or 22 years of age? And, you know, you're speaking about a young man and the, 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 the season rests on his shoulders and it's unbelievable, really, that we're talking about a 22-year-old as a saviour for Lincoln City this season. But, you know, that's what, that's how important he is to the team. You know, it's no coincidence that since he's out, out of the team, Lincoln City creatively have, have not been very good. Um, I like Lee. I think he's a fantastic player and, and the sooner they get him back, the better. What's your prediction for Saturday's game, then? Uh Ooh, I'm going to go for a nil-nil draw. A nil-nil draw. Um, I can't say anything but defeat, I'm afraid. A bit negative, but uh, there You're you go. always negative. I know, but I can't help it. It's hard <laughs> not to be. Um, moving on, uh, we caught up with uh, Jamie Forrester earlier this week, but first, here's Lee Beavers. Um, going on previous seasons, I've always been a well-organised team and hard to break down, so I'm guessing it'll be no different. Yeah, it'll be a little bit different to Gay Meadow, obviously. Um, which is all new and shiny and everything, so it'll be totally different to Gay Meadow. Um, I mean, how was the confidence going into the game? Because I imagine it must take a bit of a bash, just uh, the manner you wait, the, the manner of the, the other night's defeat. Yeah, definitely. Um, we've just got to try and put it all behind us. Um, just forget about the result and concentrate on the good result that we had on Saturday, and put that into perspective. Really. How do you see the next three games? Three, three away games over, over a short space of time. Is it uh, quite a nervous time for you? Um, no. Um, so sort of this time of the year, pitches aren't aren't the best, and obviously playing away from home. Um, we just need to get as many points as we can on these last next couple of games away from home. Have you been able to identify what how you went wrong the other night? Or? Well, no. I mean, we all had a day off yesterday, uh, which is customary really after after a Tuesday game. We're back in training this morning, so uh, I'm sure the manager will have a few words. And it's just a matter of uh, thinking about Saturday's game really. Are you happy with the moment? The goals are going in quite nicely. Yeah, I'm, I'm relatively happy. I mean, it's not it's not about any individual really. It's about the team trying to stick together and, uh, and try and get some points on the board. Right, on the back of the game against Shrews, really, it's travel to Macclesfield next Tuesday. Um, Lee, that's another massive game, probably bigger than the Shrewsbury game, because uh, Macclesfield are down there in the tail as well, aren't they? Yeah, hugely important game. Um, I'm not actually looking forward to going there on a <laughs> Tuesday night. It's not the best places to go at any time of the season, not at least particularly on a Tuesday night. I think that, that is going to be you know, a, a, an absolutely huge tussle. Especially if it's windy, rainy, it's uh, it's not going to be one for the purists, I, I don't think. But um, as I said before, apparently Macclesfield have, have totally transformed their style. Um, play a lot more passing football. You know, last season they were a bit of a kick and hoof side. So um, I, I'm predicting that uh, I'd like to see Lincoln get three points out of that game. But I think that that's going to be another. Uh, I'll take a point to be honest. A couple of ex-imps in Macclesfield's squad. We expect Martin Griffin to play, but Franny Green's a bit touch and go injury-wise, isn't he? Yeah, Martin probably think he'll have a point to prove against Lincoln. The, uh, obviously, they let him go, didn't they, in the summer? Um, never really got a fair crack of the whip at Lincoln. Um, perhaps understandably, because last season, Jamie Forrester and Mark Stallard obviously scored uh, with, with the top scorers. He's obviously gone to Macclesfield. He's done quite well, and, and you know he's going to be a real threat. So... Um, you know, Lincoln will have to look out for him, but I'm sure Nat Brown will have come up plenty of times before him against him in training, so hopefully he'll know what he's all about. Uh, Fanny Green, the strike back, the famous strike back, um, yeah, he's, uh, he's touch and go, but uh, I'm hoping for Lincoln's sake that, um, that he doesn't make it, uh, not purely because, you know, when players do come up against the former clubs, they do tend to tie that a little bit harder. OK, that's just about it for this week's show. I'd just like to thank the Shed Pub for their hospitality again. Um, just to remind you, if you're not going to Shrewsbury on Saturday, you can join me for the Big Match Live, which you can access on sportsecho.co.uk. I'll be online from about 2.30. And Mark will be with me in the Siren FM studios on Monday to review the action from the weekend. Thanks for watching.